got the Parker Bates. Well, that's it. I've actually caught Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Aquatic College. My name is Bry, and today I am on Wireside Fishery. Uh, I'm on Fox's Lake and I'm here on a 72 hour session and it's a birthday session for Dan. Um, you'll remember Dee and Dan from last year when I fished on Wireside. Um, it's Dan's birthday, so they've been here since uh, Monday and it's now Friday uh, they've had seven and they've lost three um, and I have tagged along with Glenn we're here uh, until Monday uh, morning so hopefully I can bring you a carp there's some absolutely stunning carp in here um, up to 33 pounds um, so if my rod goes, there's a possibility that I'll beat my PB of 20.1 pound. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, I'll show you where I'm at. I'm on peg three, which is a really stunning peg. Um, so I'll show you the peg I'm on. Uh, I'm using three rods today. Um, unfortunately, they don't allow any pellet that is not sold in their shop. Don't ask me why. So rather than the Parker Bates pellets, I am on the cell pellets. If I don't get anything, that might change. Um, but yeah, I'm using cell pellets in PVA mesh bags. I'm using several different hook baits, um, including Parker Bates, which is my main ones that I'm using, because um, that's what I'm most confident in. But yeah, oh, thought I was a bite from Glenn there. So yeah, I'll show you, show you my peg show you where I'm casted to with all three rods um, and uh, hopefully you can follow me on my session and we can catch a car. Um, I've been um, leading which you can probably see my lead rod behind me, my lead and spod rod. I've been leading out which I've never done before um, and apparently there's a gravel bar that runs along the middle and I've cast out 12 wraps which is just close to halfway um, and I've been pulling it back and I can feel a load of gravel for about two wraps so I've set my two of the rods at 11 and a half wraps which takes me um, takes me out towards the middle on a gravel spot the right hand rod there is actually a hole out in front of me which drops down to about 12 or 13 feet so I found a gravel spot in that hole so my right hand rod is only three and a half wraps out um, which is out in in that hole and I've put about four spoms over the top of each rod and the spoms have got sweet corn um, cell pellet with some cell sauce over it and cell powder so yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, I'm having some beers and uh, some food. So apologies in advance for the footage later on. It's probably gonna be blurry, but I'm enjoying myself. It's a bit of a social. Um, I'll introduce you to uh, D, Dan and Rob. Rob, oh my word. Um, I think he's sponsored by Stella. So yeah, I'll introduce you to Rob. He's told me he wants to do something on foot on the, the footage tomorrow. If you remember him, he did my outro at Wireside um, last year. He loves being on camera. So we'll get him on film. Um, I'll be filming Glyn, because Glyn's on my side. D 
Dee and Dan are the rest are on the other side, so we won't get any footage of them catching fish unless I'm over there. But yeah, you can follow me on my journey. So keep on watching, and uh, hopefully I'll bring you some carp. So these are what I'm using today. So I've got a cell pellet, which is four and six mil. So the ideal for the PVA mesh bags. So I tied a load of those. And then my swim is peg three. And I've got one rod, which is on its own. And that's cast out at 11 and a half wraps. Now, as I said before, there's a there's a gravel bar that runs down the middle. I think I've found it because I cast out at 12 wraps, which is about just under halfway. And I pulled it back in about two rod lengths and I could feel the gravel with the lead. So I've cast that one out at 11 and a half wraps. And then on this side, I've got my other two rods and the left hand one as you can see is also out 11 and a half wraps on that gravel bar and then my right hand rod I have found a spot three and a half wraps round here and it's like a hole it get it's like a deep pit here so I'm thinking the fish might be around that area so I've cast that one out of three and a half wraps there's a gravel spot there too so that's that rod out so all three are out. <coughs> Bless me. <sighs> Damn hay fever. And then this is my peg. So I've got my own steps coming down. And I've got the cradle and everything set up there. The cradles you have to dip um, prior to coming into the, uh, into the lake. So when you sign in at reception, you have to dip your... Um, your cradle and your weighing sling and also your fishing nets so they all have to be left in the dip while you're paying the remainder of your fee to come onto the lake so that's where my cradle is i've got my mat on there to lean on because my knees hurt in the gravel so i've got that to lean on and i've got my my seat there and obviously my camera and then I am using my Sonic Access Bibby. So it's obviously the camo version. And I have got an overwrap on it. So as you can see the difference, that's a normal Bibby inside. Which is a bit of a mess at the moment because I'm only just setting up. But that's the Bibby. And then I have got the overwrap on it which you can see adds a couple of feet. And it also helps with the... Oh, just had a beep then beep on that rod um, it also helps with the condensation so I've got some of the vents open at the side I might fish with the uh, door open tonight but that's the um, the overwrap and then I have got my Daiwa um, spod rod with my rocket and it's got a built in um, Spawn flow inside because that's one of the other rulings for why I said. So yeah, that's it. Um, Glyn is one pass, so that's Glyn's baby there. Don't focus on my finger, focus on there. So yeah, that one behind the person next door. That is Glyn's baby, and then over this other side. Here we have got the chaos. So you can see there's down there in front of his baby. So D and Dan in that one. Uh, and then we have Rob to the one the side. So yeah, that's where we're set up. I think that's I think it's Ben. Who's talking to Rob now? Rob's probably looking at elephants or something or something, he's had that much to drink. <laughs> but that's where Rob is. So that's where Dee and Dan are. They're over the other side. I'll go over there in a bit and be a bit social. So yeah, I'm on a bit of a point. 
so we can see it on that side and then as we look down this side it goes round into a point in this corner um, I'm on the point bit which gives me quite a bit of water to aim at I'm fortunate that there's no one on the peg next to me so I've got a bit more avenue if I see a fish jump but it's just going to be a case of I know I'm on three hard spots I'm just going to have to keep on watching the water see if anything goes and react on it see if any fish show themselves but yeah bring on the next 72 hours and I am hoping for a PV fingers crossed so the rigs that I'm using for this session consist of the following so I've got the usual tubing to stop the fish from scratching against the line and then that goes down to a two ounce inline lead and then from there I've got a length of about seven inches of the fluorocarbon stiff hook link on one end I've got the anti-tangle sleeve and then down the other end I have got a size six kamakura hook and on this one I have got fake sweet corn on the other two I'm going to use various wafters and pop-ups and I've also got a bit of the tungsten putty just to weigh it down so the wafters will sit like that above the hook and then the pop-ups will sit up like that and then what I'm on the PVA mesh bag side I am using the four and six mil cell pellets because on wire side you're not allowed to use anything that's not sold in the shop so I can't use Parker baits so they're the four mil six mil pellets I've also got some of my spod mix and this is four and six mil pellets combined with some cell powder and cell source so they're the two things I'm using I'm also drizzling it over some of the flat spot from Parker Bates. So this is the yellow spot one, which is a fruit one. I've also got the monster crab one, and it creates a flat spot on the water, um, and it's an oily attractant. When that dissipates, you can tell there's fish on your spot because plumes come up again. So it's a good visual to know there's fish feeding over your spot, and it's just a great product. So yeah, that's what I'm using for the session. Um, fingers crossed <laughs> I catch a fish um, I don't want to blank on the 72 hour but yeah let's get these rods back out and see if I can get a car just discovered these these are called back leads um, they go on clip them on your line after you cast out and it keeps your line pinned down rather than it going halfway across the lake to uh, to where your hook bait is but yeah absolute game changer
well good evening um, no bites whatsoever couple of liners but that's about it the whole lake is absolutely dead I can't believe it after the pictures I've seen from this week of people catching um, one carp has come out today um, from the right hand corner where we are no one that I know um, it didn't look that big either it was only a, probably a lower double um, but there's been a few fish topping not not loads one or two um, but yeah there's nothing at all so um, so it's 25 past nine now um, I'm going to wind down because I've had a hectic week not really slept much so I'm going to get an early night um, and hopefully I'm woken up by uh, a nighttime bite which has been what happened to <coughs> excuse me what happened to Dee and Dan at the beginning of this week before it slowed down so yeah uh, I'm gonna get some sleep hopefully I'll wake up in the morning with a nice misty lake and we can get some nice film footage and stuff like that but if not um, I'll see you bright and early in the morning. Good night. Oh, fucking hell. Well, good morning. <sighs> what a night. Didn't really sleep last night. I was too excited. Optimistic of a night bite and uh, yeah, nothing happened. Um, no beeps whatsoever. Didn't even hear any fish crash. And then I woke up this morning um, about half eight to the sound of a screaming reel. And it was Dee's from the other side of the lake. So I'm well chuffed for Dee. All I heard was 32 pounds. Um, if I've got a picture by now, I'll put it up now. But yeah, cracking, well done Dee, proper chuff for you. She's in the 30s club. Um, but I've not seen anybody else catch on this side of the lake. Um, Glenn had no bites whatsoever either, he's on this side. And they all seem to be in over to the right where the tree is. There's a spot there. And they all seem to be crashing out there. Um, nothing at all in the edges so i've redone all three of my rods this morning i've got them all out at 12 wraps um all in a line in front of me which is probably the limit of how far i can cast otherwise i'm going into the the swim of the people on the other side of the lake and i've then spawned probably about oh, Bloody dog. Um, I've probably put out about eight spawns over the three rods um, just to see whether I can uh, encourage a bit of a bite across the three. Dan said that he'd put quite a bit of bait out and that's how he got the fish yesterday. So I'm going to try that today. It rained a bit earlier on. It's nice now, nice and dry. So uh, hopefully we can get a bite but yeah it's uh very frustrating there's only d and dan that seem to be catching that corner and the guy on the end peg which is also cast into that side in the corner so yeah uh, fingers crossed the fish move out on the feed and have a bit of a go at my uh spod mix and take my bait <sighs> so i'm just gonna drink another brew um have my cereal biscuit and maybe a bacon boy and uh, I'll see you in a bit. Ooh. A flat spot showing. Right where my bait is. Come on, Rod. Just for me. Just one fish. That's all I want. Yeah, it's been an absolute struggle. The only people catching are, we've got Dee and Dan here, 
and they're literally casting up here off this edge and that's where they're catching all their fish no one else is catching and there's a guy called Ben we asked this guy past that Ben there's another Ben on that end peg and he's casting up against that bank and he's catching and Ben next to him he's had one literally casting around the same spot but this guy me another three there and all down that side except Ian Dan a blanking some dodgy geese look at there's D going past in the van for any roofing uh, inquiries contact D and Dan on their uh, Facebook group and yeah it's um it's been an absolute struggle no bites no runs but I did see something a fin come up around where I am no jumping or anything like that all the jumping is all around that bit but the wind has changed direction it's now blowing down this way ever the optimist Saturday night come on let's catch a fish Well, what can I say? Yeah, um, no bites today. Saturday, I've spent most of the day either watching people reeling fish uh, on D and Dan's side, uh, the closest ones to the far bank, and on this side. Uh, the two bends at the end have been catching and I've taken a few pictures for them um, just to help them basically um, and I've sent them to them so they're chuffed with that so it's now nine o'clock at night and I'm only just getting my tea I've just spent the day talking to people and uh, the afternoon drinking beer so I've got my, I think it's my 7th, 8th bottle of Budweiser. It's the only thing keeping me going. <laughs> um, yeah, I spoke to the bailiff and they basically said that um, the fish patrol up the uh, gravel bar, which is where I'm cast to. Uh, I've got it at 11 wraps. The 12 wraps... Um, when I pulled it in, it was getting caught initially, so I think I was over the back of the, um... Ooh. Ooh. That was a bite on the blue one. Ooh. Um... Yeah, I've got them both at 11 wraps. Um, I'm in the central bit, I think, now of the um, of the gravel bar with the two right hand rods, um, and I've put one on um, a high vis yellow, and the other on a high vis orange. Now, the two bends at the corner were catching on high vis yellow and pinks, like a double one. So I've got some of the Parker Bates 15 mil fluoro ones, fluoro pop-ups. So I've trimmed them down a little bit, um, but I've got a ye bright yellow on one and a bright orange on the other. So I'm hoping the high vis looks like something that they like. So hopefully they'll pick them up. I've just had a couple of beeps on the right hand one. So hopefully um, that should go off. And the left hand one I have literally got, there's a bush to the left of me. Uh, and it's about a rod length, not even a rod length out. Uh, and it's about six foot deep in the margin. So the bailiff said that they go up the middle and then they come round and go back down the margins. So so he said, no, just keep one in the margin. So I'm doing what he says. I had a couple of liners earlier on on it and we did see a vortex um, further up the bank. So yeah, I've got um, the left hand rod there. And on there I've got double fake sweet corn with... Um, 
uh, popped up basically just above the hook and then I've chucked some spod mix and then I've chucked just a couple of handfuls in and that's got the cell pellet and the sweet corn with it in there so um, hopefully it's created a little blanket the fish should be able to pick it up um, I've also fired um, force bombs out um, over the gravel bar 11 wraps out um, just two on each rod um, and I actually got them accurate today which is unheard of um, so yeah I've got those out there um, so there's a little carpet not too much bait but enough to hopefully draw the fish down um, the fish have been all in that middle bit on the on the um, on the far bank which I showed you earlier on uh, we have seen a couple of movements of fish coming down so hopefully because the weather the temperature has dropped it's a bit cooler tonight and it looks like it might rain so I'm hoping with the change of weather the fish start moving off um, but yeah I've had more beeps as you heard then um, than what I have for the last day and a half so um, fingers crossed <laughs> as I always say fingers crossed I'll wake up with fish in the night and you'll sit next time you see me I'll be holding the carp um, but I'm going to eat my tea I've got some uh, a couple of balms one of them's got a burger and a rasher of bacon on and the other one's got a sausage and a rasher of bacon on bacon on with some nice I found some nice new sauce it is if I can find it uh, come on so yeah I normally use the the Red's Barbecue Kansas, so that's what I normally use, and that's quite nice. It's got a nice barbecue taste, but I've also found this one is what I'm trying now, and it's the Holy One, and it's got um, what's it called now? Can't see without my glasses. You know you're getting old when you've got to put your glasses on. It's got like a really spicy thing on it. Let me just see. You can't see it in the light. Um, Worcester sauce. That's the one. My word. So yeah, it's got Worcester sauce in it. It's a nice bit of kick with the barbecue. So I've been trying that on my uh, on my balms, and it's a taste sensation. It's going to be the new garlic mayonnaise. Uh, so yeah, that's where I'm at. As I say, I've got all rods out. I'm really confident, even though I've not had any bites or um, any runs or anything or any fish over the spot other than an odd back that I saw earlier on. I am optimistic that um, in the next, when am I here now? It's Saturday night. I've got tomorrow night, which is Sunday night, and then Monday morning. So I've still got 36 hours. Um, to try and catch a fish. It's not long, is it? So I'm literally halfway. So hopefully, second half, we catch some fish. And I'm waffling, so I'm going to finish my palms, drink another couple of buds, and go to sleep. Hopefully I'll see you in a bit. Well, good morning. Um, nothing overnight. <laughs> uh, I woke up uh, at about five this morning. Um, a beep on uh, one of my right hand rods, and it's basically the bobby went up to the top, but it came straight back down. So I'm guessing it was a liner, or it was a fish picking up my bait and putting it back down. But I'm, I'm guessing it was probably just a liner. Um, other than that, um, it's been really, really quiet. Um, there was fish boshing down the left hand end and I know Glyn um, had run and lost it this morning um, unfortunately so yeah but other than that it's all the fish are at that top end again where the trees are tree line is in the embankment so I know Dean Dan's had one this morning and uh, the guy called Ben on the other side has had uh, a, the most weird looking one it looks like a goldfish proper small and chunky um, but yeah other than that 
nothing. So um, I have redone my rods. Um, I've took the one that was in the margin out and I've chucked that out um, 11 wraps to the gravel bar uh, with the fake sweet corn. And I've also made a PVA mesh bag with my spod mix, which was the cell pellets and sweet corn. And then on my two right hand rods, I one was went around to see Dan earlier on. He's um, give me a couple of the yellow high vis um, wafters that he's been using. So I've put both of those on my right hand rods, and one of them is out um, 11 wraps to the gravel bar. But then the my far right one, uh, the guy to the right of me is left. So I'm casted diagonal over to where. Oh, there's a fish there. Right over my spot. Um, uh, I've cast a diagonal over towards the tree line, near enough where, in the direction of Dan's casting, but way off, um, because there's still two people down the end on the end pegs. But I've managed to get it 14 wraps over in that general direction, which I'm hoping's on the bar and are just a little bit closer to where all the fish are. So yeah, other than that, there's nothing to report. I've not really videoed much on this vlog because um, there's just nothing to, no action at all. Um, yeah, it's it's just really strange. I've never known a lake where um, everything's just all the carp are in one spot. It's really peculiar. Just watching Dee and Dan catch another one now. Um, yeah, just really, really surreal. Never known it. I don't know if that's normal. If anyone wants to leave any comments, whether it's normal where all the fish are balled up in one area, but I know there's been that many um, rods in all the way down, and it's like a funnel shape. So I'm sort of halfway in the middle of the funnel, and then at the bottom's where Glynn is, but then at the top half of the funnel, we've got Dean down on one side and Ben on the other side, and all the fish are like in the middle. And that's where they're catching them. Um, you can see them jumping out, big fish jumping out. I mean, this 20 is just dolphining out and it's just really frustrating. I'm enjoying it, don't get me wrong, I love it. Um, it's nice to spend time on the bank and some of the wildlife here is stunning. Um, but it's just really frustrating that I can't get on the fish. Um, so yeah, it's my last day. I am more optimistic today than what I've ever been. It's miserable, um, overcast, rainy, wind, all the perfect conditions. The last two days has been sunny and um, not carping weather, but I'm just hoping now with that change in weather, the fish get down on the feed actually move around the lake and we can catch a carp I just want any just one will do um, one carp any size don't really care if it's over 20 and it's a new PB I'll take it but even if it's a it's a mid double I just want to catch a fish from here so yeah I'm just gonna make yet another coffee probably eat more food and uh, pray for one of my rods to go off Oh, mate. <laughs> Come in. 
Really? Mm. Yeah, so you get them in the net, that's not small. Might be a cookie TV. That looks tiny. Any escape on now. Got a bit of weight. Probably. Quite huge, maybe. Funny. Could come and do that. <laughs> you have to well, get all your mate. You like it all your recording stuff on. PB? If PB's a 20, but I don't know. Could be 19. 18, 19. My name's Brian, <laughs> and I've just caught a huge big common. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I've literally just done a piece of camera where I said if I don't catch on my 72 hour, I'm going to quit YouTube. And literally five minutes later, the left hand rod, oh, it's gonna, not going to work this, the left hand rod that had the fake sweet corn on has gone off. Oh my word. Keep still. And I've got this absolutely cracking common carp, exactly 20 pounds, which is one ounce underneath my PB. But it's an absolute blank saver. I'm absolutely chuffed to bits. And the people that were around me when I caught it, totally made it. So I'm gonna get a couple of pictures, get my rod back on there, but I'm absolutely buzzing. <sighs> Cracking. Really quiet night, unfortunately. Um, it got quite cold and misty, to be honest, um, and a bit of drizzle all night, and there was no signs of boshing from fish anywhere. Um, unfortunately, Glenn's not had any anything either through the night. I was hoping that his would go off. Um, he's missed six now, and that, and um, I think with the people leaving in that corner. Uh, the fish have gone in, but unfortunately he's had nothing. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm on the slow pack down because I'm off here in three hours. Um, so it looks like um, that one carp is going to be the thing I take away. Um, yeah, it's it's been a struggle. Um, it's also been a struggle mentally, which is one thing I want to mention. Um, I found and I spend a lot of time looking at how other people are doing, um, what they're catching, all over social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, loads of people going to places, catching loads of big fish and they make it look so easy and the realisation is it's not. Um, and to be honest, halfway through this session, I was getting really disheartened and thinking, why am I fishing? 
Um, why am I doing YouTube? Because I can't catch a fish and obviously I want to try and create great content um, for you all to watch otherwise what's the point in you subscribing to my channel um, and yeah it's a, it's a strange mindset I just just getting down and down and down and then I caught that one fish which it's not a PB it's not a massive fish for this lake but it's a fish and the change in me when I caught that fish it was like the whole session's worthwhile and it's just a fish at the end of the day and I'm spending three days with friends and having a laugh and having a social and and you forget that side because all you're thinking about is I need to catch a fish when in reality you need to remember everyone around you and you're privileged to be in this position where you can go out and go fishing and have a good time with your friends and and yeah so one thing I take away is just enjoy fishing it's not all about catching loads of big fish it's not all about trying to be like people on Instagram and social medias and everything else just go fishing enjoy time with your friends and just embrace it I think that's it so I'm going to pack down now I've got about two or three hours left and um, if I don't catch another fish I'm privileged to catch the one I've got so, yeah um, I'll do an outro in a bit but yeah I just wanted to put that message across because I get disheartened by looking at social media questioning myself and I'm sure a lot of people do it so yeah don't question yourself enjoy fishing well that's it Glyn's gone I'm about to go and my time on Fox's Lake on Wireside is over and I've only managed that one carp at 20 pounds but um, it's a blank saver and as I said it's about spending time with people on the bank side rather than catching fish so I'm gonna go now I've got a few gears to pack away but my rods are in so no more fish so thanks for watching if you want to like and subscribe I'd really do appreciate it follow me on all my social medias and hopefully I'll see you all soon thanks for watching <laughs>